making right choices. We are to make right decisions, understanding that wrong choices can lead to serious, if not lethal, consequences. Here's Gene. As we look at what happens next in the prophecies that God gave Ezekiel, we see a reflection of wrong choices, and we see some lethal consequences. And it involves uh, Moab and Ammon. Now let me give you some geographical background. This, as you see on the screen, is first of all the area of Ammon, the Ammonites, and you have the area of Moab or the Moabites. That's the geographical perspective. Now let me give you a little historical perspective in relationship to what God is going to say through Ezekiel. This involves a man by the name of Lot who made a horrible decision. You may remember he came into the land of Canaan with his uncle Abraham. Lot at one point in time was given a choice by his uncle, and that is, uh, Lot, if you'll go one way, I'll go the other. Because their properties and their herds and their flocks were multiplying and their servants were getting into each other's hair over where, uh, over where to find the watering holes and, and the grassy spots, and it was creating all kinds of problems. So Abraham said, Lot, if you go north, I'll go south. You go south, I'll go north. Well, Lot looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah, and he saw how beautiful the land was, and he made a very selfish choice. He went towards Sodom and Gomorrah, and he camped clear uh, near the city of Sodom. But the interesting thing is that after camping there for a while, the next thing we know, he's living in the city. And there's a lesson in that in itself. Well, God, of course, was going to judge Sodom and Gomorrah, and He did. And you know what happened? He warned them, leave. And so Lot left with his wife, with his two daughters. Sadly, his wife longingly looked back. She did not want to leave the city. And she turned into a pillar of salt. Literally, I think, a pillar of salt. It was a miraculous judgment that God brought in that particular situation. Well, Lot and his two daughters went into a cave uh, where they were living. Now, remember, these two daughters were basically exposed to all of this sinful behavior. Furthermore, they were part of the whole culture of Canaan, and they wanted to have children. And so they sinfully uh, enticed their father, got him drunk, and both of them got pregnant by their own father. It was an incestuous relationship. You see, one bad choice leads to other bad choices and very serious consequences. Now, what happened is that that led to the two nations that came from these two babies that were born to these two sisters that were fathered by their father, Lot. And so, first of all, we have God's judgment on Moab and Ammon. And we have this in this passage. And we read about it in Genesis 19 because this is the historical background to the Moabites and the Ammonites. We read, so both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. The firstborn gave birth to a son and named him Moab. And of course, out of that birth came the Moabites. And by the way, that's where Ruth uh, lived. She was a Moabite. You remember that story. He is the father of the Moabites of today, as this was written at that particular moment in history. The younger also gave birth to a son, and she named him ben Ami, or Ammon, or the Ammonites, came from his birth. He is the father of the Ammonites of today. Now, what happened is that God brought judgment on the Ammonites and on Moab. And here we read about it first in Ezekiel 25, 6-7, the judgment against Ammon. For this is what the Lord God says, because you clapped your hands, stamped your feet, and rejoiced over the land of Israel with wholehearted contempt, 
Therefore, I am about to stretch out my hand against you and give you as plunder to the nations. In other words, the judgment came because of their attitude towards the children of Israel. And when bad things happened to the children of Israel, they clapped their hands, they stamped their feet, they rejoiced. They hated the children of Israel. And so God brought judgment on them. And God said, I will cut you off from the peoples and eliminate you from the countries. I will destroy you, and you will know that I am Yahweh. And that again is a statement again and again in, this, in, in Ezekiel. You will know that I am Yahweh, or as it's translated many times, the Lord. Then we have judgment against Moab, the other son that gave birth to the nation, the Moabites. Ezekiel 25, 11, So I will execute judgment against Moab, and they will know that I am Yahweh. Now, what were the results, really, of Lot's wrong decision, his selfish decision, or we could say his series of wrong decisions? Well, the first was the influence on his own children. And we see that even with his daughters and his whole family. He lost his wife because he was not a godly leader to his wife. But then there was an influence even on the children of Israel and particularly Solomon. And this is an incredible indictment on Solomon and what happened to him because he turned to foreign women. We read it in 1 Kings 11.7. At that time, Solomon built a high place for Chemos, the detestable idol of Moab. In other words, here is an idol. And by the way, they actually literally sacrifice their children to this idol, Chemos. Here was child sacrifice. And we read on. And for Milcom, the detestable idol of the Ammonites on the hill across from Jerusalem. In other words, Solomon, because he violated the will of God, became involved with women from the Ammonites and from the Moabites. He eventually uh, became involved in their idolatry. And literally, on the hills across from Jerusalem, he built these horrible idols. And there's one story of one of the kings, I think King of Moab, where literally he stood on the wall of his own city and sacrificed his son to one of these gods. Another name, by the way, for Milcom is Moloch, an evil god that they sacrificed their children to, Moloch. It was interesting, John Milton, who wrote Paradise Lost, and he refers to this god, Chemos, as a god whom the Israelites worshipped with, quote, lustful orgies, end quote, and, quote, wanton rites, end quote. So you see why God brought judgment on these people. And it was a result of a wrong decision, a selfish decision. Now, another result was not only the influence that we see on his own children, but we see it here even on Solomon and on the children of Israel. But we actually also see the impact of the guilt. And I think Lot experienced a lot of guilt over what he did. And somehow, perhaps he didn't really trust Christ as he should or trust God as he should to forgive him. I think he suffered from that guilt but notice Peter refers to Lot and to his guilt. We read this. For as he, Lot, lived among them, that is, the children of Sodom, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, these evil people. For as Lot lived among them, that righteous man tormented himself day by day with the lawless deeds he saw and heard. Now, when it says that righteous man, it doesn't mean that he was living a righteous life as he should. I believe it means that like Abraham, he put his faith in God and God 
counted it to him as righteousness. He was righteous positionally in the eyes of God because of his faith. But he's living in the midst of sin. And it says he was tormented day by day, living in that city. And yet he stayed there until, of course, God delivered him. So there's the result of uh, sin that leads to guilt. And that's another consequence, again, of his wrong decision. Thank God that we understand that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. And yet, Lot still lived with the consequences of what happened because of his sin, namely his daughters who gave birth to these two sons who gave birth to these two nations who became so evil and impacted so many people around them. The consequences of his sin still existed. So here's a reflection and response question. In terms of our own culture, What is the most significant lesson we can learn from God's judgment that fell on the Ammonites and the Moabites? Well, one of the most significant uh, lessons is in the principle. We need to make right choices. Here's the principle. I've just stated it positively. We're to make right decisions, understanding that wrong choices can lead to serious, if not lethal, consequences. That's a reality. And certainly that's a lesson. But there's some positive things here that we really need to think about, and that is we also learn about God's patience. God was patient. But ultimately, sin sin caused judgment to come on individuals as well as on Israel. And we see that Judgment being prophesied by Ezekiel. God hates idolatry, and ultimately, the sin that results from idolatry, the immorality, uh, the evil, even the shedding of innocent blood. And he eventually will bring judgment. And I love what Paul wrote that I think correlates with making right decisions as Christians. First of all, number one, when we receive Jesus Christ as personal Savior, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. As far as God is concerned, it's a clean slate. He sees us as perfect in Christ. And He has borne our guilt. And so we can experience freedom from past sin no matter what it is. But then we can make right choices because of what we know about the will of God. And to me, a beautiful summary is what Paul wrote in Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brothers, sisters, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies to the Lord a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, your reasonable worship. And don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind So you'll be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Those are the choices that we want to make. Choices that help us to walk in God's perfect will.